A lot of people view their pets as a member of the family, but that doesn't mean that the law necessarily sees it that way. The Newfoundland and Labrador Court of Appeal recently gave a man sole ownership of his dog, even though his ex-girlfriend was the dog's primary caregiver when the couple was together. Traditional ownership law was applied to that case, ruling that dogs are, in fact, property. For more on how the courts treat pet custody here in Canada, we're joined by Peter Sankoff. He's a professor of law at the University of Alberta. Thanks for being with us this morning. Good morning. Happy to be here. All right. First of all, let's take a look at dog and pet ownership in Canada. Our data shows that 61% of Canadians own a pet. 44% of millennials see pets as practice for having kids. And you are 34% more likely to own a pet once you get married. So with all of those numbers in mind, do you feel like it's time for the courts to reevaluate how we view pets? They're maybe not just a piece of property. Absolutely. There's been uh, the way the courts have dealt with animals uh, traditionally has been very, very on a um, c traditional way of thinking about it, really. They, they've looked at it as whoever buys the animal owns the animal. And there has been absolutely no consideration of what the animal needs or really what the people need in, in the way in which they relate to their animals. And I think it's time for the courts to uh, reassess the way they consider a piece of property uh, to be treated by their owners. And I think they've always treated these animals as like a toaster or a computer, and they just say, well, whoever bought it owns it. And I think that uh, way of looking at it needs to change. Uh, do you feel like it's best to let courts maybe do this on a case-by-case -case basis? Because, you know, in agriculture, for example, livestock are property, but when you're talking about, you know, a home pet, uh, maybe there's more of an emotional attachment that needs to be evaluated. And how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, the best... The, the best way to do it, it, it could be done very easily. I mean, the best way to do it would be for the provinces to enact rules that govern the way in which pet ownership takes place. That would be a very easy way to do it, um, recognizing that couples will occasionally split up and we will need to resolve where this animal should go and whether or not people should be able to continue to see that animal. It's It's been done in two states in the U.S. Both Alaska and Illinois have recognized that the ownership of an animal is a complicated process and we need to recognize that both uh, uh, spouses who have had a connection to that animal have a claim to continue to see or access that animal. And I think that would be the easiest way to do it. But the courts have the ability to do it as well. These concepts of property are very ancient and they've never been uh, modernized to reflect the way in which we relate to animals. And that's what's so exciting about this Newfoundland Court of Appeal decision. Even though it was uh, ruled against the animal, there was a dissenting judgment, the first high level court judgment to recognize that animals are not toasters what seems like a fairly simple concept to all of us, uh, recognize that we need to look at this concept uh, differently in the modern era. All right, so to play devil's advocate for a bit, what if somebody says you have a second home, for example, like a cottage, and someone says, look, I may not have bought the cottage, but I care for it, I visit it all the time, I've decorated it, I love that place, it's a piece of property. Could this set a precedent maybe then for law to say I can apply those emotional attachment feelings to any piece of property? Well, I mean, those concepts to a certain extent already exist. The real question is is not, you know, in some cases you will or won't have a connection to that cottage and the law might or might not recognize it depending upon the time spent in the cottage, depending upon what the parties actually believed when they were buying that cottage. And the same really is true for an animal. It's just all it does is recognize that the difference between the cottage and, and the dog is that the way the law treats it now is whoever puts the money out of their pocket owns the dog, even though what we know in reality is that couples really make these decisions together. Mm -hmm. You don't buy a dog or a cat lightly. You actually think about it and invest in that decision together. So the idea that it's whoever puts out the money on that day owns the dog, to me, is simply not a reflection of the way in which people think about their animals. Peter, do you see a time in the recent future where, you know, women were once considered, wives were once considered property, kids were once considered property? Do you see the law changing anytime soon where pets will no longer be considered property, but they will be more in the category of, of kids and spouses. It's possible. That, that is actually a, a leap that the courts have not shown themselves ready to make in terms of going that far. But your question is a good one because it does recognize that even when we were talking about the way in which, uh, uh, for example, a good example is the way women owned property within a marriage. I mean, historically, it was that women could not own property. And then at some point, the court started to recognize and create legal devices that reflected more accurately what was going on in the home. And I think that sort of change that would sort of progress move towards, well, animals aren't 
the same as a toaster or a computer. We need to look at them in a way that reflects their intrinsic interests would be an intermediate step. Whether we uh, eventually get to the point where we're actually going to look at what's in the best interest of the animal in deciding where it should go after a breakup, that might be a, that, that would be a long way off into the future. But even that wouldn't surprise me. The truth is, as you point out, we are treating animals more and more like our children than we are um, as, our, as our property. And I think those are the types of changes that the law made many, many years ago about children. And it wouldn't surprise me if they did the same here one day. It's an interesting discussion and debate. Peter, thanks for joining us for it this morning. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.